Fred Film Radio at the AT International Heart Exhibition in Venice. I'm Laura de la Corte, and today we are here with the director of Oral Jebel Behind the Mountains in the section Horizonte, Mohamed Benatia. How are you feeling? Very good. Not enough stress for the moment. <laughs> okay, good. So, my first question is about Rafik. Uh, you know, it's, it's a character who is portrayed like someone who rejects the society and uh, convention to. So what, what was your approach uh, actually in uh, making him look like that? And what does his actions have, you know, symbolize in our modern world? Yes. So one of the team was from the beginning uh, asking question about our modern life, about the institution, about working, the family. Uh, what does it mean be, uh, being a, a parent? So uh, since that point, uh, the fact that he could fly or floating because he could he's not flying like Superman, but he's just floating yeah, in yeah. the air. So it's a sort of the rage that his own body is expressing, expressing that he he rejects, as you said, uh, the community that he, he, he for, that it forced him to to be the place. He is not accepting the place that the society put him, or give him to, to, to. Yeah. so it was from the beginning, it, it's somehow uh, the same theme since my first movie. But for example, the difference between the first one and this one is that there is a, a sort of radicality in this uh, rejection. It's something violent somehow. It's not very smooth like the first movie that I, I did with the same actor, Maj Masura. And uh, this time I, I wanted to, to, to express the same theme regarding to this conformism, but in this radical way. And um, considering that, you know, uh, what I was perceiving was his sense of this pulse for freedom that he has. And one of the scenes that hit me the most was when he went in the house of the couples in the woods. And there the situation is like totally changed at a certain point because it's like, he is not the bad guy, let me say, like that, simplify. But uh, this family who, you know, seems to be like a normal family, hides some secrets and has these flows, actually, um, to, towards someone that, you know, is a stranger, is uh, considering, you know, a bad guy or some, someone you don't want to help even if he has uh, a little child. So was that a critical of, you know, the common in, families? In the second part, when he uh, reached this, uh, he arrives to this house. This house, it's a symbolic thing because it symbolizes everything that he tried to escape from the beginning. Okay. Uh, and in, inside the house, we find everything. Uh, what we should do, uh, how to... Uh, uh, to raise the children, the children yeah. uh, this is good, this is not good, uh, the psychanalysis in, in general way, uh, the working, the family. Uh, so w when he uh, arrived, he, s he, he saw that everything is in this correct place, but something, as you said, it's uncomfortable, something it's missing. And the character of uh, the, the, the mother, uh, Najwa, is very important for me because it allow us to make links with uh, with Rafiq. She is like him, uh, feeling this uh, angoise, this anxiety, and in the same time, she is trying to to make the all efforts to just uh, keep this comfortable Normal. fake, yeah. the fake comfortable life yeah. that she has. So since the end, we're there for sure. She 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 is more able to just believe that something new could happen to her life. But uh, yes, it, it, this whole part is the, uh, the opposite thing that we faced in the first, where everything is, well, well, it's, oh, was open, the, um, the chip, Shepard was muting, not, <coughs> not saying anything, but he was very uh, easy to convince to this very uh, strange idea of being able to fly. And once we are in the second part, where, where the movies start to be like a thriller, we try to play with this code in order to just uh, emphasize the idea of uh, the institution of the family. So the people actually who see him fly have, you know, this sense of freedom too, but they keep repressed it, right? It's not only, uh, I think, a matter of freedom. It's more uh, the rage that his own body is expressing. So uh, 
it's a very strange idea to just tell people, look, this guy could floating in the air. And it's a radical, as I said, if, exactly like the, the violence that we, sh we faced in the, uh, in the beginning. And this idea, it's very far. It's the last, last limit of our uh, thinking what it could be possible for the humanity. So being able to go till that point, it's a sort of uh, belief that tomorrow could be very different for us and that we can broke many, uh, many, um, uh, Shane, how to say that? Yes, to bring limits, Bra to boundaries. just yeah. go through th the, this, uh, this limit. Of course. Even if it's very strange to, yeah. to, to think that you can fly. And, you know, the, um, the fact that you was shooting, the shooting location was in Rahim region of Tunisia as a meaning for you, a symbolic meaning. How did you find that location? <laughs> It was from the beginning the the idea to shoot there. I okay. know it not very well, but when, when I was children, we went there uh, very often. And uh, yeah, because the, this landscape, it's very empty. Yeah. And uh, when we saw it in the f first time, it was in uh, summer and it was very apocalyptic. Very, it was green, not this green, another sort of green. Unfortunately, when we start shooting, it was uh, not summer, but it was maybe more beautiful. But it, keep, it kept this um, strange behavior of being in uh, nowhere. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, for Thank you. you to Mohamed Benatia for being with us, director of Oral Jebel Behind the Mountain, Section Horizonte. This is Laura de la Corte for Fred, the Festival Insider. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank you. you.